Welcome back to the shop today. We are going to be working on our 2019 L5P here. Um, we are going to be installing some parts from Worley Custom Fab. We are going to install the uh, upper coolant pipe. So it uh, should be pretty straightforward. Never done it before, but um, hopefully this helps somebody out there. Let's get into it. Okay, this is what you get when you order the Worley Custom Fab upper coolant pipe for a 2017 to 2019 L5P. I do believe they have them out for 2020 uh, Duramaxes now also. Um, went with the same purple theme here. Part is absolutely beautiful. Came out looking fantastic. So you do get your upper coolant pipe. You get uh, four nice T-bolt clamps. You get two really nice um, silicone boots. And that should be everything that you get in the kit uh never done this before as as all the videos but should be pretty straightforward let's get the old one off let's get the new one on and show you how we do it okay so these are some of the tools i think you're going to need uh no you're not going to need three different pairs of pliers there i did just get them out for reference i'll probably end up using these but um they have factory kind of spring retainer clips on your upper coolant hose from the factory so we'll need a pair of pliers to get those off uh, we will need an 11 millimeter now the 11 millimeter is for the whirly t-bolt clamps um probably just going to use the milwaukee impact but uh you can use just hand tools if you have them um do have a tub of towels there i'm going to recommend uh this is specifically for general motors it doesn't have to be the ready to use you can have the full concentrate this is just what i had but you want to make sure that you put back in uh the same coolant that the OEM recommends. I do have a drip pan here and some old towels. Um, hopefully we don't lose that much coolant, but we're gonna load it up with old towels and stuff to try to catch everything that we do drop. So let's get right into the install. Should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so this is the upper radiator hose or the upper coolant hose. We are gonna be replacing today with the whirly piece. These are the spring clamps that I was telling you about. You gotta squeeze in on those to actually remove it and the same thing for that clip right there so just two clips should be pretty straightforward let me see if i can get you guys set up at a good angle and let's get this pipe off okay i did take and stuff this area here with an old towel some old shop rags etc i don't know how much i'm gonna lose um i would probably recommend when you're doing this do not take off your your reservoir cap over there leave that on um that might prevent you losing a little less fluid honestly i'm not 100 percent sure um so let's get this hose off okay so first thing is we're going to remove this upper spring clamp it's a pair of pliers My hose comes off with it, apparently. This is a pretty strong hose. Woo. Did definitely lose more than I thought. Let me readjust my drip pan down there. Yeah, I'm glad I got the drip pan down there. I'm just gonna let it drain. I did have the rag in there, but that's not doing much. So be prepared for the damn mess. Probably gonna be about the best angle I can get for you. I'm gonna try to use these needle nose pliers. Maybe. Uh -uh. So I did swap pliers here. Let's see if I can get you guys an angle. Kind of very difficult to see. 
just that clip right there. Squeeze that together. Okay, so in my experience, this upper hose is on uh, way tighter than the bottom hose. I don't know if it's because it's attaching to something that's aluminum versus something that was plastic. Not 100% sure, but um, what I did do was I did take a little pick tool here and I just kind of went down. I don't know how good you can see this on camera. Not at all. I went down on the side there, kind of hooked into that hose, moved it around a little bit. So I think I might've broke that seal free. Uh, now that I have that seal free, see if we can. Now this, this is on there very tight. Here's the old hose taken off. Okay, with the factory hose off, this is just a quick comparison between the two. Keep in mind, this hose is a little bit longer because you actually have those whirly boots that go on, so. Easy peasy. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is install the whirly boot onto the actual neck here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the fitting on. I'm gonna keep this fitting facing uh, back here, just because I think it's going to be easier to get down in there and tighten up. Not 100% sure. I'm going to want to make sure this boot goes all the way down until it touches. Yeah, and then it looks like um, we will have access to tighten it up there. Uh, now, one other tool that I didn't mention that we're probably going to use. So I'm probably going to use an extension for that 11 millimeter for the T-bolt clamp so I can kind of get down in there and tighten it up like so. So after you get your T-bolt clamp on, you're going to want to take your 11 millimeter and start tightening it down. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's all the way towards the rear. Actually, I might move that clip just because I think it could rub that line in the future and I don't want that to happen. So let me rearrange it here. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Okay, so I decided to reposition the T-bolt clamp where I just kind of come in from this angle here and tighten it up and then it's not in, gonna rub any hoses there. I think that's probably better. Okay, now that we do have the one silicone boot on the actual engine, I'm gonna put this one on the opposite side. Now this is the side that goes towards the radiator. I'll go ahead and slide that piece on and then we'll get our T-bolt clamp on and we should be ready to put this on. Okay, I do have the T-bolt clamp. Now you can see the pipe bows out right there. You're gonna wanna have the T-bolt clamp behind that. Make sure you don't do it on it or in front of it with the rear clamp or else you're gonna lose coolant. Okay, so this is a pretty difficult angle to film here, but we do have our new pipe. I'm gonna put this in and the boot towards the engine and I already do have my T-bolt clamp on there. Twist it back. That shit ain't gonna work. Okay, so I took the boot off of the pipe. A um, little bit of difficulty with fitting it there. So I'm gonna put the boot actually on the radiator like that. And 
see if I can get better alignment that way. There's a stop on that um, actual radiator. You just want to take it all the way back to hit that stop. And then we'll tighten down this boot. That's with the 11 millimeter, so that's tight. Okay, so now I have the boot tight on here. I did slide the other T-bolt clamp on. I'm gonna take this upper radiator hose and install it. Situation or situate that T-bolt clamp. Bring it in. Make sure that you're on. You want to get that T-bolt clamp behind that little bump. Well, you didn't want to see me, but hey, America. Sorry, camera issues here. It's kind of difficult to film. So I do have this other T-bolt clamp. We are in, gonna position it about right there. That's what your fully installed Worley Custom Fab upper coolant pipe looks like. Um, I'm sure it could have been a little bit cleaner if I took the T-bolt clamps and faced them down towards the bottom so that way you don't have those studs sticking up. But overall, it doesn't look bad. Um, from a functionality standpoint, you can access them much easier if you ever have to change anything out. So that's what it looks like. Now let's go ahead and add some coolant. Um, this is the part I'm a little sketchy on, not 100% sure if I'm gonna do it the correct way, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. I'll let you guys know if I have any problems and if uh, you guys see that there's something I could have did differently, um, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so we are gonna go in and remove our coolant cap. Ooh. Sucker's on there, how's it go, what's up? Ah, uh, you gotta be smarter than the cap. It's opposite hand threads. So I do have my inner fender out. Um, it doesn't stay out. That's just because we put these badass intercooler pipes on there. Now, one thing I think we need to do is, and I'm not 100% sure how to do, is uh, kind of purge the system or burp the system. Um, one thing I am going to do, is going to take this lower radiator hose here and I'm going to squeeze it and I can hear that pushing fluid through the system. Don't know if the audio is going to pick that up, but. I can see. Up here, I don't know if you can see that, but it has gone down about, I don't know, quarter of an inch or so. I'm gonna do that a few more times, and then I'm gonna add, and I'll probably keep repeating this process for a little bit. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure if this is the way you're supposed to do it. Never done it before, and I don't have any special tools. Oh yeah, it went down even more that time. Yeah, it's down probably close to an inch. So I'm gonna add some coolant in there and repeat this process a few times. Okay, we are gonna put a little coolant in here now. I do have a funnel, a clean funnel. And I'm gonna take some, just some shop towels. You guys know I love these damn things. I'm just gonna kind of cover everything up a little bit. Like I said, I'm gonna be using this uh, GM specific coolant. Let's 
see if that raised our coolant level up. And it did, not quite all the way to full yet. I did lose more coolant doing this than I thought I was going to. When I took that upper radiator hose off, stuff went all over the place. So let's go ahead and squeeze this. Whoops. Sorry for the camera troubles today. This a couple more times. You know what? I might put you up here so you can see it going down. Because it's definitely going down. Now all I'm going to do is go down there and squeeze that hose again. Looks like it's pretty good. Put a little bit more coolant on it. Squeeze that hose again. Okay, now that I've done that a couple times, I'm probably going to go ahead and take this funnel out. And I'm going to put this cap back on. Remember, it's opposite, opposite hand threads. And I'm going to probably start it up for a minute, check for leaks, and then we'll top off coolant as necessary. Okay, we are going to fire it up. Make sure that uh, when you do that, that you got all your rags out of there before you fire anything up. Checking for leaks. Doesn't look like we're having any leaks, so that's good. inside the truck here a lot of Duramaxes um, L5Ps particularly that I've read about have a problem with coolant loss and eating coolant this truck does not have a problem I've never put coolant in it uh, a single day that I've had it actually we just changed the oil there No, uh, no low coolant lights or anything like that. So we'll get out, we'll probably top it off. We'll let it run a minute. We'll burp that system again. Uh, repeat this whole process one more time just to double check and make sure we're all good. And I will make sure to keep you guys posted on how the truck's doing. Okay, so we did just run the truck. Uh, I am gonna go down here and squeeze this lower coolant hose one more time just to see if we can get any remaining air out of the system. I imagine over time it'll eventually bleed out, but um, there was no leaks, so that's a good thing.
Looks like we're in pretty good shape there. Put our cap back on. Two little locks. Right there. No leaks. Now let me show you the uh, mess down below, what you get to look forward to cleaning up. Okay, so this is the awesome mess that you're left with. I did have multiple pans down here because I had no idea how much I was gonna lose. I did just change my oil. Uh, this pan caught a little bit of it. This pan caught the majority of it, not a whole ton, probably about what I put in it. Um, but you can see here, our drips and lots of crap all over the truck that we get to get to clean up now. That first pipe, I lost way more than I anticipated. So uh, you're gonna wanna do this um, in a shop floor, maybe with a drain or have some drain pans like that. And then you're probably gonna wanna mop it up afterwards. As always, don't throw away your factory parts. Keep that stuff. So overall, the uh, install went pretty easily. The biggest pain was the uh, pulling this off at first and losing that much coolant and then um, just figuring out how to situate your clamps, etc. And getting that hose off of the actual engine side was a little bit tricky, but nothing, nothing tough at all. So I think it turns out looking pretty good. Don't forget to clean up all of your mess. Looking good. Okay, that wraps up the upper coolant pipe install for a 2017 to 2019 Duramax L5P uh, from Worley Custom Fab. Uh, once again, if anybody's just now watching, that color is Illusion Purple. Uh, appreciate the, all the likes, the subs, etc. We're over 400 now uh, since the last video. So thank you guys and gals so much. Uh, you guys can hit me up on Instagram if you want at scottlink underscore L5P. Um, Anytime I post a new video, I'll put it on Instagram right away. So these products are made in the United States. That's why I like to run them so much. So if you guys have any questions at all whatsoever regarding the install, uh, feel free to let me know. Until, uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care.